I'm going to give you five ways to gain data analyst experience on your resume before you go in and interview for that entry level job. Number one, you're going to reinterpret your resume. Now, reinterpret is not a euphemism for lying about your experience. Far from it. However, I speak to people every day. They come in and say, well, I don't have any analyst experience. And then when I start talking to them, what we both realize is they've been analyzing data for a long time just under some other job title. If that's you, go back, take another look at your resume, tweak your job title a little if you can, but highlight the data analytics accomplishments that you've made. And I think you'll find that you have a lot more experience than you previously thought. Now that is the only short game on this list. That's the quickest and easiest way to build some experience on your resume. Option number two is contract work. Now we happen to live in a day and age where it is easier than ever to gain experience without the traditional submit your resume, get an interview, get hired for an entry level job process. Which is why it's a bit ironic that we have more people than ever it feels like crying about the catch-22 that they can't get a job without experience and they can't get experience without a job. You absolutely can. And the way is contract work between Upwork, Fiverr, LinkedIn services, TopMate, which I used for a long time. It is easier than ever to provide and sell a useful service to people across the world than ever before. Our ancestors would have only dreamed of the opportunities that we have through the internet. So get yourself out there, start doing some contract work and some kind of odd data jobs, put that on your resume. Number three is something I'd like to call the created internship. Now I'd like to differentiate this from the standard internship. Obviously that's an option, but if you're one of those people that's struggling to get through an interview, maybe traditional internship isn't working for you either. The created internship is something where you go in and offer a specific service to a business that maybe doesn't offer traditional internships. Traditional internships, obviously big business, they bring in 100 interns in the summer, you go in, you compete, you interview, maybe you get it, maybe you don't. A created internship is where you go into a business and you offer specific services, maybe for no pay, and yes, I can hear the screaming already, but you're going to go in and offer to solve a pain point for them. You're going to say, I can do this specific thing for you, which I know is valuable. And you're going to have some sort of contract, whether it's verbal or written, whereby you say, I'm going to put this business on my resume as an internship, as a, you know, whatever, however you want to write that work up. Now this may, re this requires a bit of a long game. This may require you to network a little bit, it may require you to go out and take coffee chats with people and, and meet people and understand what their pain points are from the get-go. But it's something that doesn't require you to pass a regular internship interview process. The fourth option is charity work. Now, because of their very nature, charity organizations, nonprofits, churches, and the like are in a very unique position where they are starved for data and they need good data analytics work, but they may not be able to pay a professional data analyst. This creates a unique opportunity for somebody that's in the market for trying to build experience. If you go to one of these nonprofit organizations and again, advertise some sort of specific capability, address some pain point that they have, you can generally get very valuable experience, often for a known name organization and kind of look like a hero in doing it as well. When you think about it, charity's lifeblood is donations. Whether it's a church, whether it's a veteran's charity, whether it's a homeless shelter, they live off of donations, off of goodwill. The game for them in drumming up donations is often showing efficiency, showing that they can take people's goodwill and their donated money and put it to good use, feed the homeless, deal with poverty situations, get veterans employed, whatever their mission is. If you can help them show that efficiency, whether that's through dashboards or graphs or PowerPoint presentations that they can show to potential donors, 
that is tremendously useful and they will generally be more than happy to endorse you putting them on your resume. The fifth and final one is kind of an interesting one and I've seen a lot of people be very successful using this. You're going to experience your own life. Now, I don't mean that to sound all metaphysical and inspirational speakery. You're going to experience, i.e. put it on your experience, your own life. I see this happen often with people that have career breaks, either they, they go off to have kids or they, for whatever reason, they're out of the workforce and they're trying to explain a job gap. And I've helped a lot of people put this on their resume. What we do is we take the data analytics type things that they're doing in that career break and we write it as experience so that it's no longer just a gap that you have to explain. It's a direction that you chose to go in your life and you then analyzed it. So what do you do there? Well, you analyze your social media content. You can analyze the family budget and how you put that on a spreadsheet and made presentations to convince your spouse to go along with your budget plan. Whatever, however you took numbers and made them useful, you can analyze your own fitness goals. If you had a goal to run a marathon in a year, you analyze your progress with running. If you had a goal to bench 225 in a year, how did you track your progress, your calories burned, your steps, all that sort of stuff. So experiencing your own life, while it's not always terribly convincing as work experience, can actually provide some color and some interest on your resume. It's also very helpful to, to cover up or to explain a date gap as a conscious choice that you made to take a step back from the paid workforce and do something a little bit different, even if that choice maybe wasn't so voluntary. It's just between you, me, and the wall. To sum up, I've got five good ways that you can create experience or develop experience on your resume without the traditional resume interview entry level job process that seems to be confounding so many people. And it's really easier now in this day and age of the internet than it ever has been before. Number one, you're going to reinterpret your resume. Don't lie, reinterpret. Number two, you're gonna do contract work. Things that are not full-time paid employment but involve some sort of business transaction where you're providing data analytics services for someone. Number three is the created internship where you get out there, you find a pain point in a business and you go and sell yourself as sort of an unofficial intern with the verbal understanding that you're going to use that business on your resume. Number four is gonna be doing charity work. These charities are data poor but they really need it in order to keep those donations flowing. If you get in there and help them out, not only does it, does it show work experience for you, but it also counts as volunteer and can, can gain you some goodwill in the progress process. And then number five is you're gonna experience your own life. Use your own life experiences and, and process and the things you do external to the workforce and reclassify it as work experience on your resume. My friends, I hope that these steps are helpful to you. If you would like to work with me further, please visit my website, themajordata.com. And then we can work together on a resume that will help you with these things and many more. Semper Fidelis, and I'll talk to you later.